So you guys know why this is late, but it's not denied. A sister is what? Say it with me. Booked and busy. Thank you for the prayers and the encouragement. I really appreciate it, guys. You guys have been awesome. Thank you for your patience. Now, let's get into the mess. First of all, let's get into the fashions and the hair. Some were, you know, yeses and some were definitely noes. First, let's start with Bethany. Who is wearing my dress. It's a custom Willow by Waters design and it retails anywhere from about $1,500 to $3,000 and I've had it saved in my Ukes wish list for a few months now. I've been eyeing that dress for like a birthday or a New Year's party, something. I've been wanting that dress for a very long time but you know I'm just not that type of person. I can't, I, I, I'm, I'm frugal but I'm also fabulous, you know what I mean? So I'll spend, I'll splurge, I'll treat myself and get something nice, but if I got school loans, <laughs> which I do, I just can't drop 1500 on a dress. Like I'm just like, uh, I'm still not paying my school loans. Like I'm the type of person who can shop, I need to shop free of debt first. <laughs> but baby, once I send out that last student loan check, I'm getting that dress. Because Bethany, she look cute in it, right? But baby, please believe, a sister like me would slay the hell out. I done hurt my teeth. <laughs> I would slay that dress, just know that. And when did Bethany get into stars? Girl, bye. Yes, I'm jealous. All jokes aside, Bethany looked great. I think her makeup was perfection. I loved her hair. You know I love that dress. Shoes were sickening. She looked really nice. Even her fake tits. <laughs> Ramona was bothered by Bethany in this reunion. But even that, she looked really, really good. But I just don't know why she was serving fairy at the reunion. Like, these ladies did not look like they were going to the same event. You know what I mean? Dorinda was going to the Oscars. You know, Bethany was going to Bless Sleeping Beauty. Tinsley. Tinsley was going to Curse Sleeping Beauty. Ramona was going to the Emmys. Um, and who else was on the table? Carol. <laughs> Carol was going to Curse Cinderella as well. I just, I don't, I don't know. It's like the outfits were just all over the place. Uh, but Bethany, for her to have been so dark this season and to show up so light and just very fairy tale, girl, <laughs> do you? I love the look and not because I'm biased to stars. I just love the look. She looked really, really great. She was the best look for me of the entire reunion. Lord, I forgot about Sonia Morgan and that I dream of Jeannie foolishness. Since we're here, let's get into it. First of all, Sonia. Nobody needed to know that your dress was $39. Like nobody needed to know that. And I think when she says stuff like that, it makes people think about her financial, you know, situation. Her, isn't she in like financial distress right now? She did get full price for her um, rental, for her townhouse rental, which I think she was fudging those numbers. I don't think she got full price, but for the sake of the show, we'll believe it. But I just, I don't know. Again, this is rich people problems, but I'm feeling like she is in some serious debt because we didn't need to know that she dressed was $39. But you know, if I glance at it a little bit longer, it does give me Forever 21 New Year's clearance section. And the hair, what was going on with this bouffant? Let me just say this, the weaves, the blonde weaves were flowing in this reunion. I know it's a naked albino horse in Brooklyn right now because these broads snatched every blonde horse ball. Everybody had just extra hair. Dorinda had extra hair. Tinsley. Woo! Tinsley. Mm mm. That blunt, uneat. It was like blunt certain places, then it was dropped, then it was blunt again. I don't think she meant to do that. I just think the weave got cut too fast and it just wasn't even out properly. It just, that hair was a no from me. Now, however, I did love her jewelry. I love those earrings. You know I love a bedazzled chandelier. The earrings were sickening. The evil stepsister um, ball gown. I, mm, mm, I, it, no, no. I just, and normally they serve fashions on this show, but not Tinsley. Tinsley did not give me fashions until, I always want to say Punta Cana because of the Real Housewives of New Jersey, but she didn't give me fashions until... Columbia? Is that where they were at? Until then. Whoever styled her, they did an amazing job because everything she wore, I was like, I need that. I want that. Where can I get it? And I love the shoes. Let's get into Ramona and her mother of the bride dress. <laughs> Ramona. It was cute, but it was so like not season 10 reunion. I 
like Carol's dress more than I like Ramona's and I still felt like Carol's dress was a little um, just blah but I feel like she came in because I think this reunion Carol knew what she was doing she knew that moving forward she was not going to be a part of the show because the dress was very dark and I feel like that's where she was at with this show like it was she was showing up to her funeral of being on this show like it, it's this she's dead done and over it with the Real Housewives of New York so this is how she came in to uh, this sh uh, reunion but can I just say Andy was done with her as well because when that phone went off I said is Andy going uh, pimp slap <laughs> Because you know, you know, Andy, they call him the biggest housewife in all of Bravo, but he is the biggest pimp in all of Bravo because he got holes in what? Different area codes. Andy is definitely a pimp daddy. And when one of his hoes didn't correspond with what he told them to do, the look he gave Carol, I was like, oh, wait, Carol, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Where's Adam? Because you about to get beat up. Dorinda's dress, um, it was okay I would expect more from her to me to me she's the flyest person on that show so I would expect it more than like this chain gown oh uh, you know aside from Bethany Carol looked like money as well but I feel like Carol and Bethany were the only ones that look like money everybody else looked accessible and that's not what we want you know what I mean if we want to watch people who are accessible we'll watch <laughs> anything on we tv no shade <laughs> but that is you know middle class people getting a come up we don't tune into the real housewives of any uh city for that you know what i mean we don't um i don't want to see something that i can get no shade but i will say this i do get giddy sometimes when i see some of my, some of my jewelry on the ladies because you know i'm a jewelry connoisseur okay so i do get giddy sometimes because a lot of the ladies like costume jewelry and that's my thing as well i get giddy about that but you know don't be wearing no dress that i can afford why are you on the show this is my dynasty give me dynasty or nothing at all i'm really glad that they addressed uh, luann's blackface although the ladies were kind of trying to make excuses for her um, but I am glad that they address it because as a viewer of this show, I know that I'm not the intended audience for um, any of the housewife shows except for Potomac and Atlanta. More Atlanta than Potomac, okay? Let's be real here. So I know that I'm not the demographic they're looking out for, but I watch the show. And as a viewer, um, there are, you know, people like me who were offended by Luann's costume because this is the thing. Black people don't have a problem with um, non-black people dressing up as a black celebrity. It's the respect that is never there that is the problem. Because taking um, like pitch black uh, paint and painting your face black and putting on red lipstick, that is a minstrel. That is not a black person and a minstrel is making fun of and degrading black people. So when you do the bare minimum or when you do something that is just, oh, this, this is something that black people have. Let me throw this on. Oh, I'm a black person. I'm this black celebrity. And that was the problem. If Luann would have came in in a sickening Diana Ross like red gown with jewels and beads and a bad shoe and, you know, a bedazzled microphone and big Diana Ross four B curls, like one of them big Diana Ross wigs, you know what I mean? Or even if she was going for um, Diana Ross and what was it? Is it, was it Harmony? Mahogany Harmony, Lord, Mahogany. Part your hair down the middle, pull it back in the ponytail. Y'all know my Mahogany look, I love that look. Put on some, um, what is her name? That model back in the 60s. Those kind of eyelashes that she wore, you know, and the puffy little ponytail in the back and just, you know, gave us the Diana look. I would have never had a problem with that. Never had a problem with the fact that you walked in with this huge afro and bronzer and was like, I'm Diana Ross. It's disrespectful. That's what it is. It's like, I don't you're telling me that you can't see my distinctions or differences as a black person. You're saying that this is what you have. This is what a, a majority of you have. So I'm going to take this and throw it on and be like, this is that celebrity. And it's like, no, we come in different shades. We have different hair texture. We have different bone structure. We look different. 
you being very ignorant and just throwing something on and saying you're that person is telling me that you don't see me. I'm not being seen. That was the problem. And the fact that, you know, you're backtracking, you make these excuses. It's like, oh, I had no idea. You did know. You did know and you didn't care. That is the problem. So I'm glad that it was addressed. Although I'm not the audience that's intended for this show, I'm glad that you talked about an issue that bothered me as a viewer. So I appreciated that. Um, even though the ladies were still trying to save the neck of their friend, I do like that it was called out. <laughs> when Dorinda said that she went to church with Lady Gaga's mother, I'm not going to front. I was like, oh, Dorinda go to church? Because <laughs> I'm just like, what gangsta church does Dorinda go to? And does she take um, communion? Because if she do, you better have a priest on deck for exorcism. Because Dorinda, <laughs> I'm imagining Dorinda at communion right now. Chow, hide your kids, hide your wives. Dorinda has taken communion and she about to light this altar up. Oh my gosh. Dorinda go to church. Wow. You know what? <laughs> she need to. <laughs> so is it me or did you see this too? I felt like Andy was team Bethany this episode. I really, really do because when the ladies were talking about how they didn't want to and refused to film at Bobby's funeral or didn't know that the cameras were going to be there um and they thought that it was disrespectful that Bethany filmed during the during Bobby's funeral Andy was so defensive he was just like oh no Jill asked us to be there and I'm glad that Bethany did that because I wanted that footage like he was you know when Andy is getting real nasty that head started swinging him that card starts going back and forth and he looked like he about to slice somebody with that card that got Bonquisha and Shaniqua and Shanene all Andy asking them damn questions. So I just, I was just like, oh, Andy is team Bethany. And Bethany was sitting there eating it up. As, An as Andy was going through the line, reading them ladies down, Bethany was like, <laughs> she was so happy that Andy was getting them together. Because at the end of the day, he was just like, I'm glad that she got that footage because I wanted it. So I don't know if the ladies refused to do that. And then they were shocked to see the cameras there or what but that moment with Andy and Bethany I was like oh are we showing favoritism here because there have been rumors that he favors Bethany hmm. what y'all think let me know in the comment section below the way Bethany is talking about Jill makes me think that we're going to get a Jill Zarin reunion or Jill Zarin return back on this show and I know you guys are not here for it but I am guys I did not like Jill in the end when her and Bethany's relationship started to fall apart because Bethany loved Jill. Jill was horrible to Bethany. Absolutely horrible. I'm not saying that uh, Bethany should forgive her and move on just like that, right? However, it would be, I'm just thinking producer mind, because you got to realize I, I also produce too, okay? Um, I've more or less have produced like sketch shows and stuff on stage, not really a few uh, film sketches, not TV shows, but I got the goods. Anyway, producer, you know, mind, head on, storyline, you know, editor. I'm thinking that it would be really good to see them patch it up or at least start to see like a redemption or a repairing of a broken relationship and see them come together now as girlfriends where they're at in life. Because with Bethany losing her boyfriend and then with uh, Jill having just lost Bobby, they have that in common, you know what I mean? And I would love to see them to heal through each other, you know, and hopefully rise above the petty drama and just heal, apologize, move forward. They don't got to be best buddies, but I just, I don't know. Jill has a really interesting storyline and it seems like she wants to get on the show because Andy was like, well, she emailed me and told me who she's dating. He used to date Ramona. So I feel like she's feeding him what's going on in her life to get back on the show. And I think Bethany is softening up to the idea. So I'm here for it, but Jill, if you get back on the show, you're going to have to play it safe because Bethany is the top dog right now. So before you left, you were the top dog and Bethany was your underdog. But now the dynamics have changed and I hope you can humble yourself until you get a couple seasons in and get your status with the viewers back because you left on a very bad note. So give it a couple seasons so you can get your, 
you know, your real Apple back and the viewers can really get behind you to then start challenging Bethany, but take it easy because you broke her heart. You know what I mean? Because I don't feel like Jill is, Jill ain't no underdog. You know what I mean? But I think to get back on TV, she'll do what she got to do and uh, later challenge Bethany, which is what we need. We need somebody who will challenge Bethany. She cannot run the show. It's an ensemble cast. We are not watching Bethany and Friends. Did you have lunch with Jill recently? Oh, no, you didn't. Of course you didn't, because the cameras weren't there. Can I tell you, Dorinda came to this reunion ready for Bethany. She is not getting off this girl's neck. Every time Bethany says something, Dorinda got a response. And I'm kind of inclined to believe Dorinda in this situation. I don't know what is going on, but it seems like the girls have finally realized that Bethany is playing the game. I don't know why it took them this long. It's just like the woman is calculated, but she's doing what you're supposed to do on reality TV. If you are going to make a whole fool of yourself on reality TV and put all your business out there and be judged by the world, millions of viewers, then you better get a damn good coin and you better hawk everything you got going on. I think it's smart. I don't know why none of the ladies have done this yet. You know what I mean? Except for Ramona. She's tried, but I just, they haven't worked out. <laughs> they haven't worked out because when Bethany read down all of her businesses that fell, I was like, oh, you didn't have to do that to her. You did not have to do that to her. But I do agree with Bethany. Ramona being transparent, and if she was um, trans transparent, transparent, and uh, was really open and honest about the ups and downs and the struggles of being an entrepreneur and starting your own businesses and realizing that this one isn't working out and going, that would have made her more relatable. That really, really would have, and she probably would have tested a lot better this season if maybe she opened up about that because I would love to see that side of um, Ramona, but she is the type of person, and she talked about it earlier in the in her time on the show, that uh, she grew up in a, like an abusive household. You know, she went through a lot of stuff, so she's very guarded and very strong. So you only see the vulnerable parts of Ramona when she's at her breaking point. And since we're here talking about Ramona, um, she's very jealous of Bethany. She really, really is. And Ramona is jealous of Bethany because Bethany has come from privilege, right? Even though, like, she talks about her childhood. That ain't no privilege you want. But Ramona is jealous of that because, and this is why I say that, because Ramona, whenever she gets mad at Bethany, that's the first thing that she brings up, aside from her fake tits. She always brings up that she grew up in privilege. She had a rich daddy that was able to take care of her. She was given everything. I had to work for everything. I, you know, started my own business by the time I was 37. I had this, I had that, I had that. And just always running down her resume to Bethany, who doesn't care. And I, and what trips me out is that Ramona is jealous of Bethany for the same upbringing that Ramona is giving her daughter. So you're jealous of Bethany and mad at her for being privileged, but you're raising your child the same exact way. How does that make sense? Yes, I just want to say the fake tits. Listen, Bethany had them girls on display. And to be honest with you, when you got them on display like that, somebody got to say something because... I don't know. They've never looked that way before. Like, I think throughout the season, they've always looked very juicy. But, um, some reason this episode, they look rock hard. I was looking at them like, ooh, did we get them? I don't know. Can you, um, pump implants up? Did she get them pumped up? They just seem like <laughs> boulders. Very like cantaloupes. <laughs> and you don't want cantaloupes. You know what I mean? You want... You want, um, why am I holding? What do they feel like? Not sandbags. <laughs> you want jelly, jelly. I don't think you're ready for this jelly. I don't think you, you know, but girl, somebody had to say something about them rock hard titties. Y'all, the ladies were tired of Bethany, like sick and tired of her. Bethany literally had one ally at this reunion and it was Sonia who was doing the bare minimum because Sonia wasn't putting her neck out there for Bethany but she would defend her and the only people who could hear her defense of Bethany was the viewing audience because she was speaking into the mic but she wasn't like saying anything directing anything to Dorinda or Carol she's just like oh my goodness yeah but she you know mm -hmm. oh but she didn't mean it like that come on I hang out with her all the time you know what I mean? And I'm like, Sonya, if you want to defend Bethany, go full force. But I think that 
Sonya wanted to let Bethany know that she had her back and was trying to show her that, but also not getting too far out there so that she can also get dragged for filth like Bethany. So she was just, you know, keeping herself safe, but also showing her friend that she got her back, but not too much because she don't want to get, you know, no rocks thrown at her because her house is not even made of glass. It's just open. You, you throw a rock, you're going to hit her right away. And the way Dorinda is reading, Sonya, you don't need no more Dorinda reads, especially since she brought up that um, you cheating on your husband in Paris or what? Chow! When Dorinda gets angry, whoo, she brings up stuff where it's just like, uh, that's something you told in secret, secret. So then we get to the, uh, where Andy is asking Dorinda if she thinks that she's a drunk and asking Bethany if she thinks that Dorinda's a drunk. That edit, Dorinda, I gotta be honest, you looked horrible in the edit on this reunion. You also look horrible throughout the season. It's not entertaining anymore. It's, I think when we the viewers thought that it was like a one-time thing, because we know that you guys are filming for hours and they're pumping you guys full of liquor so that they can get the worst of you sometimes, you know, because it's entertaining. When I realized that every time you had a drink, you became that monster, I was like, hell no. I immediately checked out from you. And uh, it's unfortunate because I like you sober. I don't like you when you got a couple drinks in you because it just goes ugly. You can be sloppy, but you can't be ugly. You just hurt everybody that you love. Then you cry and then you get defensive in your confessional. So I don't, girl, you got to work on that next season. I hope your daughter talks to you and it's just like, mom, come on. You got to, if you're going to secure the bag, secure the bag for a couple more seasons and pull back the liquor because it's just ugly at this point. Anyway, when Andy asked Bethany if she if he thought that if she thought that um, Dorinda was a drunk, Dorinda was going so hard. She's like, Bethany, answer. Do you think that I'm a drunk, Bethany? No, I just want you to tell me if you think that I'm a drunk. The way Dorinda was saying that to her, it made me feel like she got some tea on Bethany. And you know how Dorinda is when she is in that defense mode. She be pulling out stuff and she goes for the jugular. So the way she was saying it, and she, she even said, are you sure that you want to say that? Oh my gosh, Dorinda about to say that Bethany be mixing uh, Xanax with alcohol, which I believe that she does. And I think, I felt like she was about to say something and Bethany caught it. So she got herself together. And then she made this comment and I was like, was she talking about Dennis? Did you guys hear this? She said, I've already been in one intervention this week. I'm not going to get into another. And I'm like, was that about Dennis? Ciao. Anyway, that's where it ends. This reunion gave me something. I was interested in it. I would take a three part from this reunion. If it's two parts, fine. But I would take a three part. I wouldn't mind it because the ladies are um, interesting. This season was interesting for me. I really liked The Real Housewives of New York. They had a, a two or three filler episodes that I could have done without. But I felt like the ladies really, really delivered, um, in my opinion, concerning the housewife shows for all of 2018. I don't think that any other housewives were bringing it. I know we're gearing up for The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And and um, I don't know. I know we're going to get a few surprises that people are not expecting. And I know, so I think it's going to be more heartfelt uh, this season. I don't think it's going to be a lot of drama because you know Greg is sick. So Nene is just, uh, I, I word on the street is that she is really muted this season. So I think this is going to be the sad season with some joyous moments. But I don't think we're going to get a lot of drama from them, which is fine for me. But uh, you got to have a little bit of something um, to keep the, you know, just the mood of this show balanced. So I don't know. I do know that, um, their production is going through some stuff. So I hope it doesn't reflect the actual show, but we will see. So I'm fine with the three part reunion from these ladies. I think we're getting to, I haven't checked, but I liked uh, this reunion. What did you guys think about it? Let me know in the comment section below and I will see you next week for the following episode of the Real Housewives of New York. Season 10, Reunion Part 2. Yeah, that's it. I got it right. See you then, guys. Love you. Bye.